Cool. Hi everyone. My name is Rags Rajamadugu. I run the Advanced Solutions Engineering team at Appstra. Thanks, Claire. So we saw so far how the NSX configuration from a connectivity point of view is uh, interpreted as an intent for the fabric and using that as the basis we can um, give you anomalies uh, using our intent based analytics. Fixing that basically so I want to show you uh, how the security side of the house looks like. So yeah. for security as you guys know micro segmentation is one of the popular use cases that NSX solves. But as Mansoor mentioned, usually in the real world, we see customers having heterogeneous workloads. Uh, what that means is a given organization, uh, not all of its workloads are running on NSX. They all mostly have some bare metal workloads. They have some workloads running on classic vSphere, maybe some other hypervisor. So in this kind of a heterogeneous world, the question is, how do you still get a unified way to express the security intent and have that fully enforced both on NSXT and outside of NSXT. So here I have a use case, like I'm depicting a small topology which has two networks, I mean logically two segments. One is a database <coughs> network, another one is an application network. Both of these networks have heterogeneous workloads in the sense that if you look at database network, it has a database VM managed by NSX and a database bare metal that is outside of NSX uh, management domain. It's in a bare metal rack. Similarly, the app network has an app VM managed by NSX and an app bare metal not managed by NSX. So from a policy point of view, my policy or my intent is to say that databases by themselves cannot initiate communication to the applications because applications are the ones that need to you know talk to the database, not the other way around. So when you want to do that, like you go to NSX T and express that as a security policy. So when you do that, what happens is now using the DFW, the distributed firewall feature in NSX T, any traffic from the database VM to the application VM is dropped and enforced by NSX T, right? Like that's that's a given, that's the basic ABC of NSX. However, the traffic from the bare metal database to the bare metal app is not dropped by NSX because it's running outside of NSX. But thanks to our partnership with uh, VMware, we have a close engineering level relationship with them. We work with them to make use of their enforcement point concept in NSXT. And whenever you declare NSXT security policies, it notifies AOS of these policies. And we look at them and enforce parts of them that are applicable for the underlay. So in this case, this policy, once you define an SXT, AOS gets notified and AOS has this uh, vendor agnostic group based policies, which is our way to define uh, micro segmentation in a vendor neutral manner. So we translate the NSXT security policies using AOS not bound APIs for group based policies. And once you do that and commit the change in the in AOS, it will be basically, you know, computed as ACLs on the top of the racks. And imagine doing that, like if you have uh, to Claire's, uh, you know, back to her example, if you have like tens of racks and you were using these, uh, you know, EVP and virtual networks, you each virtual network is basically like, you know, running on an arbitrary collection of top of the rack leaves. And so how do you really like if somebody defines this kind of a policy and if you really want to like, you know, manually do it or even using some sort of automation tool, it's very hard to kind of like, you know, figure out which stores I need to, you know, put these ankles on. And that's where our single source of truth really comes to the rescue because we manage the whole fabric in a programmable fashion. We can totally do this in software. So in the demo, what I'm going to show you is... Uh, so just a quick question before yep. we get into that. So the, the level of enforcement there you're saying is the, the ACL. So what, what level of granularity do you get down to? So today we get down to the level of like uh, individual virtual networks. And you, that's using like, you know, SVI based ACLs. And okay. on vendors that support it, we also do port based ACLs. So within one broadcast domain, you can kind of like do micro segmentation. Okay, are you, are you looking at going a little bit closer to the applications? Because I'm, I'm thinking about container environments, yep. mostly, uh, where if you, it's, it's all in software, so you then have things like service mesh yes. um, that need to handle things in different ways. So you'll, you'll be running multiple applications, so I might have an app server, but 
I don't want different applications necessarily to be able to talk to each other, even inside the host. And the way to do that at the moment requires on-host solutions. Mm -hmm. So yes. there, are, there are technologies that do that. I'm just wondering whether you're looking to integrate with some of those so that you can enforce policy even closer to where the workloads are? Yes, that is definitely in the same ballpark because we believe that, from a, for example, if you're running on Kubernetes, as part of the, your service definition itself, you define your you know, seg segmentation rules. Yeah. So we want to like suck those kind of things into the group-based policy, but our focus is still on networking and we are also, we may reach host, but in general, if there is a good solution there, for example, in case of NSXT, we don't want to go here and do something because NSXT already solves that part of the problem. Yeah, and even is. something as, as simple as just going into Windows Firewall. And exactly. Windows Firewall. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Maybe if I were to comment, you know, one of the key principles here is we separate the policy definition, right, mm -hmm. security policy definition from the enforcement. Okay. Yeah. So we define policy as a single source of truth in one place, but then we use the best method to enforce for a particular use case. So for example, in the case of a bare metal server, it's a top of rack switch, NSXT, it's the micro segmentation, hypervisor, I mean, or Kubernetes, it would be, you know, maybe service match, yeah. right? So that's the principle here is that we separate these two things. Yeah, even, but, even at that point of NSXT's micro-segmentation, uh, VM adjacency limitations to actually enforce you know, strict security type profile, other than saying port 80 is allowed, so I can do whatever I want over port 80, yeah. isn't very good because port 80 is allowed, so I can do whatever I want over it. I do have a, a vehicle to actually get there. That's why I, I just look at the broader scheme of just because I have an adjacency and I allow things doesn't necessarily make, make me secure. Sure. Because I have to invest in other products in order to make that possible. Well, exactly. Yes. Right, right. It's absolutely. the limitations of an NSXT, but it's the expansion of an NSXT. Well, exactly. That's what I meant. Enforcement is done in the best way, yes. based on the, yeah. the best of breed product that so that, how, that. How much of that is available today? And I, I'm kind of trying to get mm -hmm. an idea of how much I can do with, with AOS today and what the development direction is, is looking like. So, are you, so whatever are you, you see in the demo is what today? is available. And yep. then container stuff, we are looking at it from a you know roadmap point of view, but okay. uh, nothing we have. Right. Cool. Uh, so in the demo, I'm going to show you like two windows that, that uh, one window shows the ping from the database VM to the app VM. Another window shows uh, bare metal database pinging the bare metal app. So for the purpose of the demo, I have simulated the bare metal using a VM on the vSphere that is running outside of NSXT. Mm. And then we will define the policy in NSXT. We will see that the, this traffic is disallowed, but this one is still going on. And then we will see how AOS fills that gap and uh, mm -hmm. prohibits even that communication. So here are the two windows. This is the NSX VMs. These are the, think of them as bare metals. So this guy is a database VM, sorry, a database VM pinging the app VM. The ping works because I haven't yet defined the policy. Mm -hmm. Similarly, the bare metal database pinging the bare metal app. So now let's, um, go to NSXT to define the security policy. So NSXT distributed firewall should be familiar to you guys. So think of this as point of sale application. So I'm defining the policy for it. Add a rule to deny the database to application traffic. The source is my databases. This is a security group in NSXT and destination is my applications and you want to drop the traffic. So before I hit the publish, let's have the ping windows on the background so we can see the effect. Favorite testing tool. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yep, still. <laughs> So hit publish, and here you can see this guy stopped, but that guy keeps going. So I press few enters here just to make sure we are. Will you integrate with BRNI or something like that to go and actually help you build those policies and those rules so that yes. way you know what those things are, you don't have to build them all by hand? Yes, absolutely. Okay. We don't we don't do that yet, but we're looking at it. So I mean, see, so the VRNI helps you to author the policies. Yes. Here, I have authored the policies manually. Yep. Irrespective of how you author it, what matters is after that is when we get notified. So yep. it is compatible to that workflow. Yep. So actually, let me see. We missed uh, the key part here. 
So here we define the policy. Just use the space bar. Yeah. So this is where you have uh, you are seeing the database uh, bare metal is still ringing, <coughs> and so now is when you come to OS, and due to that integration, this change is automatically done by the by the integration. So you can mm -hmm. review these changes. And you know the using group-based policy, the same policy is translated database applications deny. This is in AOS. So once you review that, you can commit the changes, and after you commit, even this guy stops working. So that's the bare metal. Yes, yep. exactly. Mm. So as I said, like this is the same workflow, irrespective of the number of uh, switches you have, the hardware you run on them, the operating system you choose to run on them. It's the same workflow. Do you have a mechanism for audit trail around all those things? The uh, I'm just thinking of the compliance part and having the checkbox. Absolutely, check we have audit log. Every change that we do to the device is audited, including all the blueprint commits. Okay. And here you are still reviewing the change and committing. Like uh, mm -hmm. this is what we call like change control and stuff like that. You can yeah. do. But if you are comfortable, you can actually flip the switch and we will automatically commit. You don't even have to review them, so it depends on like uh, how comfortable you are mm -hmm. in terms of your workflows. Do you have multi-user um, split of role within that? Yeah. Yes, we have role-based access yeah, yeah. control. Yeah, totally. Very grand. Is, 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 for, now, is there a checks and balances type of approach where you've committed all the things, but someone logged into a switch and they made a change directly, and you're constantly checking that and comparing the? We do this. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Basic, we have basic functionality. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Coming deviation and go that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, perfect. And, and just to be clear, it's AOS that's going to NSXT looking for new policies to then bring that over and. Yeah, yeah. In a, in a sense, I mean, thanks to VMware's thought leadership in this area, they designed a specific set of APIs that uh, we can use. So, in, mm. in a sense, the way it works is when you do something in NSXT, they will inform us. We okay. register as Push. an enforcement mm. point. Okay. Public API polling and notification uh, agent. Uh, and you import all the tags from over there as well. Yeah, yeah. 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 What happens if, uh, for some reason, a policy is created in NSXT, it's pushed to AOS, AOS looks at it and says, this looks actually like a violation of some intent statement that was made earlier. What, what's the workflow then? Yeah, yeah. For within group-based policies, we have a lot of uh, sophisticated uh, conflict detection, like within the policies. So in that case, your commit will get rejected due to the build errors. And you can review and resolve the conflict. The commit will get rejected on the AOS side, yes. but what about on the NXT side? NSX side, uh, it will go ahead and it will show you as an error. It will say this policy was uh, uh, failed to be uh, enforced by one of the registered enforcement points. Okay, and will that flag back to an NS NSXT yeah, yeah, to say, NSXT hey, by the way. You can see that. This is the yes. enforcement point feature of NSX. It's smart enough to do those type of things. Yes. Mm -hmm. We're not using just a security policy, uh, security uh, APIs, we are actually using the concept of NSXT enforcement point, and you register yourself as an enforcement point, and so if the security policy is not accepted by an enforcement point, NSXT knows about it and tells the NSXT user. Okay. Yes. Yeah.